In this year's INICT exam, the following topics were emphasized on. We had questions from the topic of infections in the form of bacterial infections, viral infections and fungal infections. In fungal infections, the focus once again was on subcutaneous mycosis. Further, we had questions on dermatotherapeutics, papulosquamous disorders, appendages disorders. As we know, usually one question from alopecia generally appears in the exam. Connective tissue disease, which is the interface between dermatology and medicine. Skin malignancy, drug reactions. Let's begin with the questions of session number one. Match the following therapeutics used in the management of psoriasis with their possible side effects. On column one, we have methotrexate, cyclosporin, puva, and acetratin. Now let's look at column B and try to match it with column A. What does methotrexate match with? The side effect of methotrexate is hepatotoxicity, which is option number B. Cyclosporin, its main side effect is hypertension and nephrotoxicity, which matches with option number D. PUVA stands for Suralin with ultraviolet A therapy. So long-term use of PUVA is associated with increased risk of skin malignancy. And acetritin is not only teratogenic, it can also induce mucositis and that would be option number C. So this is the right match for the systemic therapies and phototherapy which can be used in psoriasis. Next question. Consider the causes of alopecia. Option 1, alopecia areata. Option 2, telogen effluvium. Option 3, androgenic alopecia. Option 4, frontal fibrosing alopecia. Which among the following causes non-scarring alopecia? If we look at the different options, dear students, first we have alopecia areata. Now, alopecia areata is an autoimmune disease which is characterized by circular patches of complete hair loss, which is non-scarring in nature. Second option is telogen effluvium. We know that in the NEET PG 2022 exam, there was a question of COVID-19 induced telogen effluvium. The concept of telogen effluvium will remain in the form of severe systemic stress, which causes premature entry of hair into the telogen and hair fall. So this is also a cause of non-scarring alopecia. Androgenetic alopecia is a pattern type of alopecia, which is induced by androgens as well as genetic factors. So this is also an example for non-scarring alopecia. With these options, option 1, 2, 3 being producing non-scarring alopecia, the correct answer is option number B, 1, 2 and 3. So this brings us to one and only one important cause of scarring alopecia, which is mentioned in the exam, frontal fibrosing alopecia. As easy as it can get, the word fibrosing itself mentions that this disorder is a type of scarring alopecia, which would be good enough to get this question correct. This is characterized by a band of cicatricial alopecia. And this band of cicatricial alopecia is often associated with, as we can see in the picture here, madarosis, that is loss of eyebrows. Next question. A diabetic patient presents with the following lesions in the armpit. Which type of fluorescence will be seen on wood slam examination? So dear students, now when we look at the picture, what do we see? The image shows us a hyperpigmented lesion in the flexural area like axilla. This probably is hinting towards a diagnosis of a corinibacterial infection, which is termed as erythrasma. Now with erythrasma as an option, let us now read the different options to be coral red fluorescence, which is a characteristic wood slam finding for the disease called as erythrasma. Now erythrasma is produced by Corinibacterium minutissima. It is characterized by the presence of asymptomatic hyperpigmentation. It generally tends to involve the axilla and the groin. Occasionally, we can also have web space involvement. If you look at the different colors on wood slamp examination, you've seen coral red for erythrasma. Pitriasis versicolor is associated with yellow color fluorescence. Tinea capitis microsporum species is associated with blue-green fluorescence and trichophyton shonlenai, which produces scutula associated with favors, is associated with dull blue fluorescence. Next question. A lesion on the back is shown in the image. Which of the following disease is depicted by the image? Let's first look at the image. What do we see in the image is a very characteristic ash curve which is a black scab surrounded by erythema. So with Eschker in the mind, now let us see the options. Option A, scrub typhus. Option B, Rocky Mountain spotted disease. Option C, malaria. And option D, COVID-19. 
the correct answer for this question is option A, scrub typhus. Let's look at a little bit of theory about scrub typhus because scrub typhus, dear students, is a repeatedly asked question in the exam. Now, what is scrub typhus? Scrub typhus is an acute febrile illness and this acute febrile illness is associated with an infection with Orientia sutsugamushi, which is a rickettsial group of organism. The vector here is trombiculite mite. The infective form of this disease is chiggers, the larval form of the mite. So generally what happens is the clinical scenario here is generally a patient with fever who may have associated CNS symptoms. The characteristic lesion over here is an curve, which is a black scab surrounded by erythema, which represents the site of the chigger bite. The sites associated with scrub typhus usually are groin, axilla and the neck. This is how a classical curve presents, black scab surrounded by erythema. The treatment for this condition is doxycycline. And then when we look at the differential diagnosis for an curve. Two important disorders to keep in mind. Number one is cutaneous anthrax. Number two is brown recluse spider bite. And I already mentioned to you the treatment for this condition is doxycycline. Next question. A child presents with multiple skin lesions over the inner thigh and genital areas. Some nodules show central umbilication. The representative histology of the lesion is shown below. Which of the following would be seen on a biopsy? Let us look at the question and let us try to make a clinical diagnosis out of this question. The key words in this question will remain child, skin lesions, central umbilication. This is clinching the diagnosis of molluscum contagiosum. With molluscum contagiosum in our mind, let us look at the characteristic histopathology which is shown here. We have two important points to remember here. Number one, there is a cup-shaped invagination of the epidermis into the dermis. So that is point number one. Point number two, what do we see here? We see eosinophilic intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies, which are termed as Henderson-Patterson bodies. And with Henderson-Patterson bodies being eosinophilic and intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies for molluscum contagiosum, the correct answer for this question is option number D. Donovan bodies option number A is associated with donovanosis. Multinucleated giant cells is associated with herpetic infections. Coilocyte is the characteristic feature of human papilloma virus infection. Next question. A young man presents with the following skin lesions as shown in the image below. All of the following organisms can spread through dermal and subcutaneous lymphatics except Option A. Sporotrich Schenkai Option B. Nocardia Option C. Staph aureus and option D, Mycobacterium marinum. Now, when we look at this image, what do we say is there are multiple skin lesions and rather nodulo ulcerative lesions which are distributed along the lymphatics of the extremity. So here we are thinking of a condition called nodular lymphangitis. And with this background, option A, B and D all can produce nodular lymphangitis. The correct answer for this question is option number C. Staphylococcus aureus. Now, Staphylococcus aureus is associated with a disorder called as botryomycosis. Botryomycosis is a chronic granulomatous disease which generally happens secondary to a bacterial pathogen. It could be secondary to Staph aureus, Proteus, E. coli or Klebsiella. Let us now look at this term of nodular lymphangitis very frequently asked in the exam. This condition is characterized by the presence of suppurative inflammatory nodules along the lymph vessels. This topic is also referred to as sporotrichoid lymphocutaneous infections. Now, please remember students, repeatedly asked question in the exam, what are the differential diagnoses for this nodular lymphangitis? We have five important disorders to remember. Number one, sporotrichosis. Number two, nocardiosis. Number three, atypical mycobacterial infection. Here, we are thinking of a disorder called as swimming pool granuloma and this swimming pool granuloma is produced by Mycobacterium marinum. So, please remember, dear students, Mycobacterium marinum is associated with swimming pool granuloma. Further, we have cutaneous leishmaniasis, number 4 and number 5 is tularemia. So, please keep all these differential diagnoses in mind when a patient presents with nodular lymphangitis. Next question. A forest worker developed skin lesions over the forearm. Histology of the nodules show the following findings. 
which of the following is true regarding this condition now first let us look at this image now this image is showing us brown round thick wall bodies so on histology if we have brown round thick wall bodies we have to think about copper penny bodies and copper penny bodies is associated with a subcutaneous mycosis called as chromoblastomycosis with chromoblastomycosis in mind let us now read the different options option a these bodies are formed by engulfment of the dead fungi by the macrophages this is a false statement option number c it is a dimorphic organism this is a false statement rather sporotrich shenkai which produces sporotrichosis is a dimorphic fungus option number d angio invasion is common this is also a false statement the correct answer for this question is option number b organism does not invade the underlying fascia tendons and muscles because this is a subcutaneous mycosis next question vesicular rash is seen in which of the following condition dear students let us first try to understand what is a vesicle now please remember vesicle is a fluid filled lesion it's a fluid filled lesion which measures less than 1 cm okay and if the fluid filled lesion measures more than 1 cm we call it as a bulla so this is something which you need to remember that the primary lesion here is a vesicle or fluid filled lesion what are the options given number 1 hand foot mouth disease number 2 dengue virus infections number 3 zika virus and number d roseola infantum now out of the given options what do we have to remember here is option number b c and d that is dengue virus infections zika fever and roseola infantum generally tend to produce a macular or a maculopapular kind of an eruption the correct answer for this question is option number a hand foot mouth disease now hand foot mouth disease is a viral infection this is produced by coxaki a16 enterovirus number 71 morphologically the patient presents with a papulovesicular lesion where are they distributed they are mainly distributed over the palms soles buttocks and oral cavity so mainly the exanthem here is acral and vesicular this is what we can see here are the multiple vesicular lesions which are distributed over the palms and soles in dengue we get a biphasic rash biphasic means in the initial 24 to 48 hours what we can have is the phase showing transient erythema and later on three to six days after the onset of the fever we can get a asymptomatic maculopapular exanthem now please remember students exanthem is a rash which is seen on the body rash on the body is referred to as an exanthem and a very characteristic finding that we need to remember here is the presence of white islands in a sea of red so here we can see there is a sea of red that means there's a background of erythema in which there are some white islands and this is a characteristic appearance of the rash which is seen in dengue fever next question a 10 year old boy is brought with weakness in the lower limbs and rash over the eyelids the biopsy shows inflammation of the muscle what is the finding which is shown in the image below if we look at this question we are looking at a pediatric age group this weakness in the lower limbs inflammation of the muscle probably the question is talking about juvenile dermatomyositis so juvenile dermatomyositis because there is inflammation of the muscle the question also tells us that there is a rash on the eyelids which probably could be a heliotrope rash with this background let us look at the picture which is shown to us the picture is showing multiple papular lesions on the mcp joint and the ip joint so with this background of juvenile dermatomyositis the finding which is shown here is referred to as a gottrun's papule now please remember student very commonly asked repeat question juvenile dermatomyositis in the central institutes so let us look at the skin manifestations over here number one we get violaceous flat top papules and we can see here they are distributed mainly over the mcp joint and the ip joint these violaceous flat top papules are called as gottrun's papules the next important skin lesion is a violaceous macular erythema we can see the distribution mainly over the periorbital region with the propensity to involve the upper eyelid and this condition is referred to as heliotrope rash the next skin lesion violaceous macular erythema distributed over the upper back and the shoulder 
very characteristic of shawl sign and lastly if you get multiple hyperkeratotic fissures which involve the tips and the sides of the digit this is referred to as mechanics hand so this was the summary of the important skin lesions of dermatomyositis let's take up the next question a 60 year old female patient presents with progressive skin lesions as shown in the image what is the diagnosis option a squamous cell carcinoma option b basal cell carcinoma option c melasma option d discoid lupus erythematosus now straight away one important option which we can eliminate is melasma melasma cannot be the answer because melasma is a hyperpigmented disease and here a dle also cannot be the answer because dle presents with a characteristic discoid plaque center shows atrophy plus scarring periphery shows hyperpigmentation when we look at the morphology of the lesion what does this lesion look like it looks like an ulcer and with this background, the distribution which is seen over the upper portion of the face, we can make a diagnosis of option number B, basal cell carcinoma, because this is going to fit the description of an ulcer, which is termed as rodent ulcer. So please students, do keep in mind that rodent ulcer or BCC is a locally invasive tumor, wherein metastasis is rare. Let's begin with the questions of session number two. A middle-aged female presented with chronic history of relapsing and remitting, mildly itchy erythematous plaques over the scalp, sacral area, knees with history of joint pain and nails as shown in the image. Now, if we try to identify the key points in this question, we have erythematous scaly lesions. The distribution over the sacral area and knees are hinting towards extensor distribution. This history of joint pain, which is talking about arthropathy, there's nail involvement. In the nails, what do we see is the most common nail change in this disorder, which is pitting. We also see a little bit of distal onycholysis. Pitting, distal onycholysis, the presence of arthropathy and extensor distribution of skin lesions is hinting towards the diagnosis of psoriasis. So the correct answer for this question is option number A, psoriasis. Next question. A female with history of Raynaud's phenomena, skin thickening and breathlessness presents with skin lesions as shown in the image. Which of the following best represents it? Now, when we look at the question, there's history of Raynaud's phenomena, skin thickening and breathlessness. Breathlessness is probably talking about a systemic involvement. Which system is it, students? It is the pulmonary system. So, probably there's pulmonary involvement. This is a Raynaud's phenomena which is a sequential color change which we'll talk about and skin thickening. With this background, we have to make a diagnosis of systemic sclerosis. And with systemic sclerosis, we have to remember the characteristic pigmentation which is seen over here, as you can see here, is both hypo as well as hyperpigmentation. There are brown areas as well as white areas. And with this background, we make a diagnosis of salt and pepper pigmentation. Now, please remember, leukotrichia means white hair. Leuco means white. Trichia means hair. Vitiligo is a condition characterized by chalky white depigmented macules. Now, what is poikiloderma? Now, poikiloderma is a skin lesion which can be associated with dermatomyositis. This is number one. Number two, poikiloderma is a triad characterized by pigmentary changes. So, this pigmentary alteration. When I say pigmentary change, it could be both hypopigmentation as well as hyperpigmentation. Point number two is atrophy. Point number three is telangiectasia. So pigmentary change, atrophy and telangiectasia. This is the triad of poikiloderma, which is not seen in the image here. The correct answer is salt and pepper pigmentation. Now, what is Raynaud's phenomena? Important to remember, it is characterized by episodic vasoconstriction. And because of this episodic vasoconstriction, which usually can happen due to emotional stress, it could be due to cold weather, what is going to happen? There is a sequential color change. The sequential color change, number one, is pallor, as you can see in the first picture. Then there is cyanosis, which is seen in the second image. And thirdly, there is rubber. So this is the sequential color change, which happens in Raynaud's phenomena. Then we need to understand that because of episodic vasoconstriction, you can get ulcers due to which you can get gangrenous changes, you can get digital gangrene and they heal with pitted scars. So pitted scars 
and gangrene and digital ulcers that could be a feature of systemic sclerosis and talking about the characteristic pigmentation here we have two important components number one we can see that you have a vitiligo like depigmentation over here so vitiligo like depigmentation plus what happens in this condition is the pigment around the hair follicle is retained that means around the hair follicle the pigment is retained because of the rich blood supply to the hair follicle so this vitiligo like depigmentation is white in color the perifollicular pigmentary retention is brown in color that is why this pigmentation is called salt and pepper pigmentation and what else you can get on nail fold capillary scopy you can get the presence of multiple dilated blood vessels which is referred to as nail fold capillary telangiectasias next question identify the disease depicted in the image option a paget's disease option b lichen sclerosis option c lichen planus and option d angioma of the vulva so with the characteristic picture and the image which is shown here which is characterized by this porcelain white kind of skin lesions the correct answer for this question is lichen sclerosis let us look at a little bit of theory about this condition as it's not frequently asked in the exam. Now, lichen sclerosis is a chronic inflammatory mucocutaneous disorder. So, all these are key words to remember. It's chronic and inflammatory. It can involve both the genital as well as the extragenital skin. Now, dear students, why do we have to learn about this condition? Why is it important to pick it up? Because this has a high chance of developing atrophy, scarring, functional impairment and very very important malignant evolution so it has the potential to develop malignancy in the future how does the patient present so here we're going to have porcelain white papules and plaques initially and then the hallmark of this feature is fragility the mucosa becomes so fragile that it might develop erosions fissuring purpuric changes and echimosis and further, what is the end result of this condition? So we can have hypopigmentation, sclerosis, atrophy, which can progress to a cellophane paper type appearance, which is pathognomonic of this condition. So please remember, this is going to be a straightforward question in the exam in the form of lichen sclerosis, which could be potentially asked in the future. And please remember, this is yet another picture. So here, the potential of destruction of lichen sclerosis is highlighted in this picture, where this picture shows a vulval lichen sclerosis which is characterized by fusion of the labia minora so fusion of the labia minora is highlighted in this picture and this was about lichen sclerosis next question a patient presents with lesions on the inner thighs and the perianal area they are nodular with a size of four to six millimeters the histopathology has been shown in the picture so this picture has already been discussed before the correct answer for this question is option number d molluscum contagiosum next question Jarrett's Huxheimer reaction is due to number one interferon alpha number two interleukin six number three TNF alpha and number four interleukin eight the correct answer for this question is options two three and four that leaves us with option number D two three and four now let us try to understand what exactly is Jarrett's Huxheimer reaction now this is a acute febrile inflammatory reaction what is the clinical scenario here now please remember this happens on the initiation of chemotherapy in any spirochetal disease now this is very important conceptual understanding it is not only seen in syphilis it can also be seen in lyme disease it can also be seen in relapsing fever so please remember students the concept here to remember is it is not only seen in syphilis it can be seen in any spirochetal disease the onset of the reaction is generally few hours after the start of treatment and if i was to take the example of syphilis what is going to happen here let us now look at the pathogenesis of jarrett's huxheimer reaction let's take the example of syphilis in syphilis we are going to use penicillin and when we treat the patient with penicillin what is going to happen there is lysis of the spirochete on lysis the lipoproteins which are there in the structure are going to leak out into the bloodstream and as a response the patient is going to have a cytokine storm. There's a release of tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin number six, interleukin number eight, due to which there's an immense inflammatory response. The patient can have fever, malaise, hypotension, myalgia, and very, very important, worsening of the skin rashes. Now, why it is important for us to know this drug reaction is because when I give penicillin to a patient, it is important that I counsel the patient saying that See here, there may be worsening of your skin problem after taking this drug, so not to worry. This amount of reassurance is very important and goes a long way in our clinical practice. 
The treatment for this condition is self-limiting and generally symptomatic. Next question. All of the following on inoculation in the skin can lead to skin manifestations as shown in the image except Option A. Corinibacterium minutissimum Option B. Sporotrich Schenkai Option C. Nocardia brasiliensis Option D. Mycobacterium marimum This is a repeat kind of a question which again talks about the same topic of a nodular lymphangitis and we already have seen the five important causes of nodular lymphangitis that's why the correct answer for this question is option number A. Corinibacterium minutissimum which is associated with the production of a condition called erythrasma. Next question. Biopsy examination of a lesion on the lower limb of a patient is shown in the figure. Which of the following is true about the likely organism or diagnosis? So let's look at the picture. Again the picture is showing us round, brown, thick walled bodies. These bodies are referred to as copper penny bodies and with the background of chromoblastomycosis, let us read the options. Option number A, sclerotic bodies are the fungi engulfed by the macrophage, this is false. Angio invasion, option number B, this is false. Option C, infection spreads deep and underlying fascia and muscles are involved, this is also false. The correct answer for this question is option number D dematiaceous fungi so please remember students what are dematiaceous fungi these are fungi with melanin in the cell wall the fungi which have melanin in their cell wall are referred to as dematiaceous fungi let's look at chromoblastomycosis also referred to as verrucous dermatitis etiology is pigmented fungi also known as dematiaceous fungi i told you already these are melanin containing fungi in their cell wall Two important species to remember here are Fonsicaia pedrosoi and number two Fialophora verrucosum. If you look at the clinical presentation, it is generally going to be a farmer with history of vegetative trauma. Two types of skin lesions can be seen here, number one. That's why this condition is called as verrucous dermatitis because you get a verrucous plaque. You can see here, you get a rough plaque. Okay, you can see a plaque which has a rough or an uneven surface. And point number two, you can have cauliflower-like lesions on the foot. So cauliflower lesions on a foot of a farmer is going to clinch the diagnosis of chromoblastomycosis. The next question. Finasteride used to treat male pattern baldness acts by inhibiting which of the following enzyme? Option A, aromatase. Option B, 5-alpha reductase. Option C, 17-hydrolase. And option D, phosphodiesterase. The correct answer for this question is 5-alpha reductase. All of us know that 5-alpha reductase is responsible for the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone and finasteride is going to block this enzyme. In relation to phosphodiesterase, we have a drug which we use called as aprimilast. So aprimilast is one drug that we use in psoriasis and aprimilast is a phosphodiesterase 4 inhibitor. So this is an additional point to remember that in psoriasis we are going to use epiblast. We move on to the next section. This is going to be on some miscellaneous topics. Now these questions have not been completely recollected. So let me just discuss these topics with you. The first is from a drug reaction. So this kind of an image was shown in the exam. So what do we see here is a hyperpigmented lesion which is shown over the palms. So please remember students. There is one type of drug reaction which has two important features. Number one, it recurs at the same site. And number two, it heals with hyperpigmentation. It is a delayed type of hypersensitivity response. The correct answer for this question is fixed drug eruption. So if we have a question on a drug which is talking about recurring at the same site and healing with hyperpigmentation, let us mark fixed drug eruption in the exam. The next question was on Hansen's disease. The question was asking about how are you going to diagnose and treat Hansen's disease. For this, we need to remember that there are three important cardinal features for the diagnosis of leprosy. Number one is skin lesion. Number two is nerve involvement. Number three is slit skin smear for acid fast bacteria. So in skin lesion, what we have to remember here is hypopigmented or red skin patch with definitive loss of sensation. So please remember the lesion could be hypopigmented or it could be red also. Red because lepra reaction. Sometimes existing skin lesions may become red with definitive loss of sensation. So this is number one. Number two, thickening of the peripheral nerves with 
लॉस ऑफ सेंसेशन एंड और मसल वीकनेस इन द एरिया ऑफ नर्व सप्लाई तो प्लीज रिमेंबर द एंटायर थिंग इज इंपॉर्टेंट दिस नॉट ओनली थिकनिंग ऑफ द नर्व्स देर इज ऑल्सो लॉस ऑफ सेंसेशन विद और विदाउट मसल वीकनेस इन द एरिया ऑफ द नर्व सप्लाई ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर इन्वॉल्व नर्व एंड लास्टली पॉजिटिव स्लिस्किन में फॉर एसिड फास्ट बैक्टीरिया नो प्लीज रिमेंबर लॉर्ड ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स डिंट नो दैट आउट ऑफ दीज थ्री कार्डनल फीचर्स हाउ मेनी आर रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द डायग्नोसिस एंड ट्रीटमेंट प्लीज रिमेंबर स्टूडेंट्स just one point is necessary so please make a note that only one point out of these three should be there for the diagnosis and for the initiation of treatment in a patient of leprosy now let us look at few points which are picked up from other subjects we have some relation to dermatology so we will take these topics as one liners let's make an attempt to answer this question students number 1 staining technique to demonstrate mycobacterium leprae in the tissue The correct answer is fight Farrakhan stain. Next question: Characteristic feature of a cesare cell. Now we know cesare cell is seen in cesare syndrome. How do we identify this cell? It has a convoluted nucleus, which is known as cerebriform nucleus. Next question: What is the defect in hereditary angioneurotic edema? We know that hereditary angioneurotic edema deals with a defect in the complement system. Where exactly in the complement system? C1 esterase inhibitor. So that is one thing we need to remember here. Next question: A child with osteolytic lesions, S100 CD1A positive. Now please remember, students, CD1A is a marker of the Langerhans cell, and we know together with CD1A, we also have CD203, which is a more specific marker for the Langerhans cell. So with Langerhans cell histiocytosis, that should be the best answer for this question. next papular purpuric glove and sock syndrome is associated with a dna virus a very small virus known as parvovirus b90 and monoclonal antibody against cd20 why am i taking this topic because this topic i have taught when i was doing the treatment of moderate to severe pemphigus vulgaris the name of this drug is rituximab lastly an antiretroviral which can be associated with hyperpigmentation over the palms and soles the correct answer for this question is m tricetabine so with this we have concluded this session of the discussion of the inict questions of dermatology and related subjects so students kindly identify these topics and read around them because what is important is the topic is going to repeat so identify these cluster of questions also do the questions which are going to come in the foreign medical graduate exam because the topics will remain important identify the topics and prepare well for the neat pg exam wishing you all the very best for a successful exam thank you